Hello once again. Welcome back. Glad to have you back here and checking out what's new, what's happening with Foundry. I've been enjoying putting out these short clips. I hope you all have been enjoying them as well. I do appreciate feedback as I figure out how to record, throw it up on YouTube, and definitely if the information is, is helpful for you guys and girls as well. Tonight we're going to do a little bit something different. going to kind of do a, a deep dive into a specific module. There are a ton of modules, if you guys aren't aware already, especially as we get closer to release, you will start seeing more and more modules coming out, maturing modules, and it can be frankly overwhelming. I did one video early on, nothing but modules, but just looking at the module site section, it just goes on and on and on. But Tonight, we are going to talk about, more specifically, the CUB module, the Combat Utility Belt by Irrational. He is one of the moderators on the Discord, the Foundry Discord, also very active in the community. So we're trying to figure out what is Combat Utility Belt, okay? So when you click it, it's going to take you here, and your doesn't, it, well, gives you a little bit of a description of it. And even if you're in the game itself, and you've got it here in your add-on modules you're like okay what does it do it, you know tells you a little bit but not a whole lot so let's go to the website well on this case github and uh, look a little bit of what it what it does and and all that so combat utility belt according to github does all kinds of stuff here so you get the chance to uh, auto distribute experience points, concentration checks, uh, you know, reroll initiative, uh, hit point generation, mark injured tokens. He's got some uh, animated uh, GIFs here that kind of showcase a few of the things. And you're like, oh, this is pretty cool. This is pretty cool. And then you kind of go down and there's a couple of things here still missing, which, you know, no, no slight. Some of it is self-explanatory, but, you know, it's open source stuff. Anybody could probably make a pull request and write something up. He'd probably take it. But anyways, let's uh, dive a little bit more into what it is from within a game and uh, show you guys exactly what it what it does. So let me fire up my game here. I've got it installed already. So we'll go to my game world, the uh, Delian Tomb as I'm running it. Get my game master and hopefully it'll work. There we go. So first of all, once you install a module, there's a couple of things you need to do. Just because you have it installed in your main game system does not mean that it is already active and working within your actual adventure itself. So for that case, you need to go to the gear icons, click on manage modules, and then check or uncheck it. I have it checked right here, combat utility belt. So I'm going to go ahead and, and, and check that. Uh, for this one, I'm actually going to uncheck a different module because there's. Uh, I want to try something that Combat Utility Belt does. So let's save this. Most modules are going to ask you, or not ask you, it's just going to do a refresh of the screen to show you what, you know, as it loads the module. Once it's in, then you click on Configure Settings because sometimes it took me a little bit to figure out a module gets loaded and you're like, okay how do I access it some are more intuitive than others like the weather effects one I was like oh cool look it shows up here or a simple dice roller some you have to go or mostly you're gonna to have to go into configure settings then click on the module settings button and that'll bring up a whole list and of course the more modules you have the more information you're going to see on here it's not really broken out in the best way. You can easily miss something, and I've, that's happened to me. I'm like, where is that module? Where? How do I configure it? Because it's just a, a heading one. You know, if you look at the journal entries, it's like a heading one. You know, CSS styling. I wish there was a little bit better way to kind of delineate some of this information. So let's just show you a little bit. Go down here real, really quickly. Just kind of show a little bit of what each uh, each thing does at least that I'm aware of, and I could be doing it wrong, so please uh, correct me if that is the case. <laughs> I'm definitely not a, a, a pro on this one, but I have used it in a couple sessions, and it, it works out fairly well. So enhanced conditions. Right now, in uh, linking conditions to different status of a, of a character, or PC or NPC. So let's say this character here, let's, uh, whoop, we got a couple things on there. We'll show that here in a little bit. Let's, uh, right here, Bernard, right? He's my PC. 
he's in the game, nothing is happening, and and all that good. We'll clear the chat log. And let's make the skeleton as well. Not undead. Actually, let's just delete him because I'm actually going to make a dragon a new one. So enhanced conditions. So there are condition tokens that the game has that the default ones are the, all these white ones here and most of them are pretty generic and you're not really sure what they can stand whatever you want them to stand for right lightning fire ice you know restrained it looks like dazed or sleepy or something like that and some of them are you know a little bit self-explanatory cub has a journal entry here has a compendium called conditions based on the dnd 5e related ones and every one of these if you click it will show an image but also shows the text of what it is if you look at the player's handbook or the basic rules you're going to see what this information is of course you can show the players you can import this so if you want to modify it or change it so this basically links conditions to status icons so for instance if you know, Bernard here gets poisoned or webbed or let's say he is charmed right I think that's charmed when I click that it'll show up and then in chat you're gonna see Bernard is charmed that is what that piece does right there so if he gets charmed and then he gets grappled then now he's charmed and grappled and then you know you uncheck one it'll update so that's what it is the remove one is good if you're only going to use the cub ones or something else and you want all these other icons to be removed from the system you just click that you hit save so sometimes you might have to refresh it yeah this one you don't and you notice the other other ones are gone which is kinda nice if you want to keep things a little bit clean and not have all of that one I do enjoy using is called the hide NPCs and everything. I, sometimes I got my BBG, my big bad evil guy, right? And I don't want the players to see them, see his name, or so they know who they're fighting. Or maybe it's just a creature they've not fought before and you want them to make like a arcana or history or lore check or something. You can hide NPC names in the combat tracker. So instead of saying skeleton or goblin or whatever, it can be a known creature or whatever you want. Same thing, you can hide chat information in the footer so that, excuse me, the chat card doesn't show up here when a, a roll or something is made. It'll just say unknown creature or something to that effect. A good way of just, again, keeping some mystery around your adventure. Pan to token is when, a t I believe, a token is selected, it will automatically pan to that. I have not used that, so uh, I can't really <laughs> explain it, so I, I need to play with it just to find out if it's something worth using. Again, a lot of these modules, they have you, you kind of pick and choose what you want. They're not forcing all of, all of this on you. You get a, a chance to say, what do I want to use? Some people want that. Me, personally, I just haven't had a need for it. Even selecting the token, you know, the GM, select the players, you know, select player-owned tokens on their turn of combat, and even deselect. Temporary combatants. I have not used that, but sometimes in a dynamic combat situation, you can, you know, hey, you know, maybe a temporary combatant has come up or something like that. Maybe, you know, like a spiritual weapon or a familiar, I don't know, whatever. This gives you the ability to kind of add that. Add experience, uh, ex enable experience point module. This one requires a refresh. If you notice when I hit the enhanced icons, I didn't have to refresh. This one does require require refresh. That would be basically hitting F5 or reloading the game. In the game itself, experience typically doesn't automatically distribute. So with this one, looks like it'll automatically add some experience to it when you beat a player or finish a battle. Concentration, one of those big things in D&D. If, if the wizard's concentrating and then they cast another spell that requires concentration or gets attacked and loses concentration, you know, many times beginning, we did not use it in a lot of our games early on. And as we, as I've, I don't say matured as a DM, but as we're playing, we're like, oh yeah, let's. This requires concentration, so now we're kind of adding that. So I've got this in, so I can do that, and then have some chat notifications if, if concentration is threatened, the prompt them to make a Constitution save, the whole nine yards. Super cool. Mighty Summoner have not used that at all. So. Uh, sounds pretty cool, but I've not done it. 
auto roll hostile we're going to enable this real quick i actually had a different token mold that actually let me roll hostiles on drop but if this one works well i might get rid of that one because do i necessarily need two of them or not so let's drag a bugbear in and let's see his hit points is 27 so let's drag another bugbear in his hit points is also 27 maybe i have to oh you know what it helps to actually hit save and then uh let's go <laughs> let's try that again so let's uh, let's drag a bugbear in hopefully his hit points are different and it's not so maybe this one doesn't work so that i don't know so according to this supposedly that you can auto roll hostile uh, tokens on canvas drop I have not actually used it yet so it might be it might be bugged I use a different one called token mold that actually does it and it does work so your mileage may vary so just to let you know there's an, an option for that as well sets a size for token effects when drawn on the token defaults to small so I think that's auto scales of tokens obviously it does not look like it, it did that because I got a small creature bigger than a medium or a normal sized creature here uh, bugbear reroll initiative so I guess if you're running initiative rerolls every single round, you could do that. If you wanted to play with that, turn it on and off. Mark uh, temporary combatants. Mark injured tokens. Kind of cool. I do use this one. So let's say this one here. We're gonna make this one owner attribute H bars update. So this guy here, right? He's got 27. So he takes you know some damage, right? Minus five. He's at 22. And so I see, hey, he's taking some damage, but now let's say he took another 15 points of damage. And this one shows a injured threshold, shows a uh, injured icon on it, okay? And then let's say he gets eliminated, automatically marks him as dead. So I use that one, it's pretty cool. Uh, a, neat, a neat little feature that I like, part of Cub and, and all that. So. Dead status meter, and then for actors, if you have an actor that goes unconscious or something to that effect, let's try Bernard. Maybe he went uh, unconscious, and there it is. So it'll mark him unconscious. So the player knows, everybody knows that, hey, we've got an unconscious character, and mark him in the combat tracker, which I don't have up and running. Oh, yeah, I actually did mark him up here, or that was from last time. Yeah, that was from this time. So there's a couple things right there off Cub that... As you can see, I use a couple of them. Doesn't mean how I use it is the proper way. It's just what works for me, and that's the the power of the the modules, the power of Foundry with its open API. Anybody can kind of build something. You could probably fork this off the guy's side if you want to make changes or do a pull request. He is definitely uh, pretty active in the community, uh, definitely on that. So if we go here, you know, his last updated was nine days ago which was the module JSON and everything as well as some other you know the main script is here he said the 389 commits to it since it's been out so it's definitely a more of a mature module in in everything which is great I have to figure out why that uh, hit point piece is not working and all because that could remove eliminate me from having to use a different module that I'm running just for that but anyways, hopefully, hopefully this is helpful for all of you. I am not being paid or asked to review these by any module authors. These are just ones that I find that are helpful in my gaming. And as you're digging through that huge list of modules, trying to figure out what works best for us. So definitely I think Combat Utility Belt is one of those that is, is really valuable for anybody running 5e and can really help keep some of your game play running smoothly. Anyways, hopefully that's helpful. If there's any specific module that you might want to see, give me a shout, shoot me a note, and love to uh, take a look at it, play with it, see if it's worth talking about. Have a good one.